Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of fun cards using one of my newest favorites from Honeybee. This is the Happy Plants stamp set and I love it. It's a way for me to enjoy house plants without actually getting a bunch of house plants and killing them because that's usually what happens. But anyway, I have some white cardstock in my Misty and I pulled out several of the little plant images from the set, lined them up on the cardstock, and then I am going to rub these stamps with my fingers because they're brand new stamps. You will find that brand new photopolymer stamps, they just need to be conditioned. I've mentioned this in other videos I've done. They, you just need to like stamp them multiple times, clean them, rub them with your fingers. You could use like a little white eraser, those sorts of things. Just the more you stamp with them, the better they take ink and the better, the better they'll stamp. So I generally will just rub them with my fingers and they're good to go. So I've only inked up these images and stamped them once each time on the cardstock. I'm not concerned right now with getting a perfect stamped impression. If I really wanted to, I would just re-ink re and re-stamp a couple of times. But I wanted to color the images and then stamp over it. I've shown that in other videos I've done. I really like the look of that by stamping with a really intense black ink that doesn't work with Copics. So I've stamped these with a Copic friendly ink and then I'm doing some Copic coloring. Right now in the video, this is real time. This is the normal pace that I color at. I'm nowhere near as fast as I show in videos. I speed that up in editing because um, otherwise we'd be here all day. Yeah, so this is this is what I usually show in editing. This is this is super super speedy coloring. Um, I'm not doing anything uh, groundbreaking with the coloring itself. I was just grabbing green Copic markers at random and coloring and having fun with it because it's greenery, so you can kind of do whatever you want. You could do them all kind of similar shades of green or the same shade of green. It really doesn't matter, but that's kind of half the fun is mixing it up and playing with it a bit. So I, this time for the most part, I actually went lightest to darkest, which I don't normally do. I usually do darkest to lightest, just it's a lazy thing. But I also have been trying really hard <laughs> to not overthink when it comes to my coloring and just go with it. Not worry too much if I'm going outside the lines, not worry too much if I mess up things, that sort of a thing. So I was just going along and coloring. So, and also, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about plants. I know, you know, there's a few things I can pick out and it's like, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> but sometimes I'm not sure, but at the same time, do whatever floats your boat. It's, it's art, it's card making, it's stamping, you know, color things, whatever color you want to do. You can always look up references if you do want to be specific. Um, but I was just, like I said, flying by the seat of my pants and having fun with it. So I did all my coloring and then again, I'm going to put these back in my Misty. I had left the stamps where they were. I've shown this before. I'm going to ink it up with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink because this is a really intense black ink that I love, but it's not Copic friendly. Like it'll smear if you color with it or color with Copics with it. And this first one I messed up. <laughs> I didn't even realize until I'm editing the video. I just tossed it. I was so mad at myself for not lining it up properly. I was like, no, it happens. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, I, I left that in there because, you know, it happens. So not the end of the world. I was going to do two cards. And then at this point, I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to make one card. You know, no big deal. Ended up still being able to make two. I, I'll get to that. So after... They were stamped. You can see how like much more intense those stamped images are. And that's why I love the restamping, even though it can be frustrating. So for my highlights, I am just using, this is a Zig, what is this? White Ultra Fine, Cartoonist White Ultra Fine Brush Pen. This is new to me. Um, I bought it mm, a couple months ago. I'm not even sure. This is the first time I've ever used it. I'm still on the fence with this. I really do still prefer my um, Secura Jelly Roll white gel pen that I use for highlights, but this is just different. So I just need to play with it some more. This one, you literally have to like twist the end to like it clicks and you get the ink to come out, the brush tip. 
all that kind of stuff, but it was fun to play with. So I used that to add highlights as always not following any rules with like the highlights or light sources. I was just adding them. So I did all of that. And then for the like vases and pots and whatnot that the plants are going to be in, rather than stamp and Copic color them, I just, I had this idea in my head. I wanted to heat emboss and I wanted to do like black, I had gold, white. These are all ones that like, if I did have house plants, the, the, these are the pots I would buy. <laughs> so I heat embossed some of them on black cardstock um, using honeybees clear embossing ink. And I use like white embossing powder and gold embossing powder. And then I stamped a couple onto a scrap of white cardstock and just used gold embossing powder for that. And doing my same method that I always do when it comes to heat embossing. I used my anti-static powder tool, inked up the stamps with the clear embossing ink, coated them with the embossing powder, melted it with my heat tool, and then we're done. So for this last little one, this one I decided to just stamp with the intense black ink and then quickly color it with Copic markers in kind of gold sort of colors just really quick and simple so I just stamped it quickly quickly colored it re-stamped it with the nocturne ink this time everything was lined up it stamped great <laughs> so once that was stamped um all of my little um pots for everything are done my images are done I've added all my highlights so now I'm going to die cut everything with the coordinating wafer dies and those going to tape into place with just little bits of my spellbinders tape. Washi tape works great as well. I just do this to keep everything from shifting when I run it through my die cut machine. Because that's the other thing that can be really frustrating. Not only miss stamping it after you've colored it, but also running it through your die cut machine and the dies move and then you're like cut off half an image. So it's always worth the few extra seconds to tape everything in place and then it die cut. And then off camera, I ended up stamping and coloring one more plant and one more little pot because like I said I was like I've got enough to do two cards still so let's do this so I did that and then I also heat embossed some sentiments from the rooting for you set and die cut them with the coordinating wafer dies and then the main sort of thing for this card is the mod a2 cover plate and I wanted to make this a window through the card front so this is was super easy this because it's a2 sized i just lined it up with my card front right against the very edges i taped the top part into place it's right on the score line there and then i was sitting here fiddling because it's like i didn't again i didn't want the cardstock to shift when i put the two uh die cutting plates together but easier said than done so all i did was take another piece of the washi tape taped it to the bottom so now everything's in place and it doesn't matter what die cut plates you use or anything the only thing that matters is leaving that little bit of the top portion right where I pointed out off of the die cutting plate so it goes over the edge so there's no plates touching it so that won't die cut everything else will die cut so as long as you leave whatever area you don't want die cut off of the plate you're good to go to do partial die cutting you could totally skip this step and just layer these die cuts on the top of a white a2 card that's normally what i would do but for whatever reason i was like this would look really fun as a window <laughs> there's something about i just i really love this cover plate i don't know there's something about like the mod lines and it's a little chunkier you know it's not really delicate and again you could also leave it like this like I decided to stack more. I die cut these pieces just from scraps of white cardstock and I'm stacking them together so that I'll have two layers of this individual mod A2 cover plate layers, just like so. I don't even add glue to every little part because it's not necessary. I just kind of go around the perimeter and then here and there. And then I'm going to layer that on top of my card front. It just gives it a little bit of extra depth and dimension. But again, you could totally skip it. It's not necessary. If this was a more intricate cover plate die cut doing a window, I would stack it just to give it more um, stability. But it wasn't necessary with this, but it did give it that dimension that I love. So I did that with both card fronts. And yeah, so they peek into the inside, which does mean you're going to see everything you write etc but that doesn't bug me but you could add an insert as well I don't I'll show how I finish the inside in a second so for my stamped 
and heat embossed sentiments. Like I said, these were from the Rooting For You stamp set. I used the coordinating dies to die cut them. And then I also used the coordinating dies for the thank you sentiment. And die cut extra pieces of just scrap cardstock to stack together to give it dimension. That's another reason why I really love coordinating wafer dies for sentiments. Because you can do things like that so you don't have to fiddle with foam tape. And especially with these cards, I decided I didn't want any foam tape. Because I don't want any of the adhesive showing. So after I stacked my sentiments, I assembled all my little plants in their cute little pots. And I was just like having fun with this. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is the collection I would have. This is my pretend, you know, my pretend house plant collection. So anyway, stacked all those together, assembled everything. And then to adhere these to my actual card fronts, I just kind of fiddled and put little dabs of glue onto the top of the actual card front and then adhere this down. So you will see the backs of these through the back of the card front. Again, I don't really care. It, it, it's not so messy that it looks off to me. Um, but again, if this really bothers you, you could skip the whole window idea and just layer the die cuts onto a card front and that would look fabulous as well. Like I've done this a million times with the honeybee cover plates, just stacking like white on white cardstock or colors, whatever. And it just looks fabulous too, but I don't know. There's something about making this into a window that I really enjoyed. So the uh, companion little sentiment I adhered on the inside kind of behind the plants. So you don't see it until you open the card. And then I had to add a bit of bling. Honeybee came out with the um, back to basics gem stickers and they have them now in like multiple sizes in the pack, which just makes me really happy. <laughs> So I added a few gold gem stickers just to the card fronts and that finished off these cards. They were really fun. There's something about like having it open to the inside of the card in this way that was really neat and it was so easy to do the die cutting this way. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for commenting, thumbs upping, subscribing, click the bell for notifications, all the good things. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.